Welcome to my thoughts on the first episode of Ahsoka. And uh, yeah, I am aware that episode two has already aired. I, because of my back pain, I'm going to do one episode at a time. So as soon as I've done this video, I'm going to watch the second episode and then do a video on that. Before I get into it, in the description box, there is the, the top link is to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so, extremely important cause. And then there are a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important cause. And yeah, let's dive right into it. So I really appreciate how cinematic this is. That's been something that some of these Disney Plus Star Wars things, you know, some of them really manage, others not so much. And because currently Star Wars cannot leave behind nostalgia, the opening is basically a riff on the opening of A New Hope. I quite liked the fight between Ahsoka and uh, I think ultimately there were five droids. You know, they try to, you know, they're trying to overpower her with sheer number, so she, you know, she takes out, I want to say, three of them by cutting holes, uh, you know, under them and then fights the the last two uh, you know yeah if you know if they're gonna try to rig the game by outnumbering her five to one yeah she's not gonna fight all of them you know straight on and let's see I really appreciate the lightsaber fights on the show so far are easy to follow you know the way they're filmed and edited and yeah, so this is indeed the map to Thrawn, and that does, of course, bring up if Ezra is also, you know, if they could also save Ezra. And let's see, then we have the. Um, yeah, um, I, I will never not love Clancy Brown delivering a monologue in front of a bunch of people. And I don't know if I still feel that we should be doing the stereotype of, you know, the, the cliche of, you know, big presentation to this important big person, and then they turn around and the person is not there. It's, I just feel like that. Especially considering that, like, you know, sometimes when you do this cliche, it's like, oh, they were supposed to show up from all, you know, off screen, but here apparently she was supposed to be standing right there, and no one noticed that she slipped away. Like, I know that Sabine Wren is good at like, you know, she's she can be very sneaky when the the circumstances call for it, but this just feels kind of silly. But yeah, we get great introductions to Ahsoka and Sabine Wren. I'm not sure why we didn't get a particularly compelling intro for Hera. It's, you know, she's also a badass. I feel like, you know, like they could have done a thing where she like makes a daring last minute rush. She could have been the one on the, you know, rescuing Ahsoka at the very start instead of Hu Yang. Although I realize they they're doing a thing where. They, the, you know, Hira and Ahsoka haven't seen each other for a while. And, yeah, um, the, the, crap, what was her name again? The, um, I'll have it momentarily. Her character is named Morgan. And, yeah, I feel, did we know already? I don't, I feel like we didn't already know that she's, one of the the night sisters of Dathomir, but that does, yeah, you know they they tend to side with the bad guys, so that does make sense. And you know she suggests to Balin, you know the you know send Lisbeth Salander to Lothal. So far, I'm liking the live action versions of uh, animated people, places, objects, and such. You know. Some of it, they had to change the color palette somewhat. Not quite as bright as on Rebels, but yeah, I, I think they're doing a, a good job so far, at least. 
And yeah, Yang recognizes Balin Skull, an excellent Ray Stevenson R.I.P. based on the lightsaber design. I also appreciate that the lightsaber action is not like the kind of showy operatic stuff that it is in the prequels. This feels more like original trilogy kind of stuff. And yeah, the ending does make it seem like Sabine might have died. That looked like a very fatal, you know, and I'm trying to think, wait, was every clip of Sabine in the trailer already in this episode? Anyway, I guess likely I'll find out, you know, as I watch episode two. I I like the casting of the various ones. You know, I know maybe about half the cast from other stuff. Uh, you know, the the I think the yeah. You know, great to see David Tennant voicing Huyang. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the you know, re reprising the role uh, from, from Clone Wars. Great to see that character again in general. And, yeah. Um, yeah, great to see these, these characters again that we haven't, you know, they haven't had a new adventure in motion, at least. I don't know about, like, books and comics and such since 2018, since Rebels ended. And uh, I felt like everyone was in character in this episode. Nobody behaved in a way that felt like completely ridiculous for the way we've seen them characterized until now. And I appreciate these these hints at, you know, obviously Ahsoka tried to train. Sabine in the Jedi arts after the end of Rebels, and there was definitely room for that. You know, they there was a meaningful moment between them at the very, very end of the Rebels finale. And yeah, um, the idea that it did not go completely well did feel like, you know. Feel, it feels very credible, knowing what we know about Sabine. Uh, I think that might be about... Like, um, when Hira said, you know, I'm sure your master found... You know, that was not... That's not okay, man. But I guess she doesn't know Ahsoka that much. She hasn't, you know... Like, we, the viewer, have spent a lot of time with Ahsoka. She, you know, she was more or less the lead of the Clone Wars. But, yeah, you know, Hera, certainly over the course of Rebels, doesn't spend a huge amount of time with Ahsoka. Because that does feel like something that someone who knows Ahsoka really well would not say. You know, it's the kind of thing, like, it could easily feel like forced tension but it did feel realistic that, yeah. Um, oh, that's right. I actually, yeah. Um, I already mentioned Clancy Brown. Really cool to see a, him in live action as Governor Ryder Azadi. You know, he did the voice on Rebels, but yeah, he also has the, the physical presence I wonder if there's people out there, I, I guess there's probably people out there who say, oh yeah, Clancy Brown, I like his voice work and have no idea about, like, you know, to me, Clancy Brown, first and foremost, uh, you know, the, the drill sergeant from Starship Troopers. Um, I think that is everything about this episode, so... Yeah, um, I guess by the time you're watching this video, the 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 my video on the second episode will already be up. But yeah, catch you soon. May the force be with you.